in addition to developing scientists, we're really developing leaders. I mean, these are going to be the young people who go out and hopefully make important decisions that are going to affect us all and, you know, maybe even change the world. And so what, what I feel like my job is to kind of help them to uh, understand both that the world-class education that they're getting along with that comes with some kind of responsibility that they will take this information and, and do something really important and, and Im have impact with it. Tracy is absolutely committed to doing everything she does at the very highest level, whether it's, it's teaching, research, or service. As a teacher, she works very hard to provide the best and most current knowledge, perspective, and insights to her students. And she doesn't do this by watering down the material, rather she stresses a high level of rigor in her teaching. As a mentor, Tracy cares deeply about her students and believes in their development both as scientists and as people. The one thing I most appreciate about Dr. Johnson is that she helped me choose my path to graduate school in a way that my other mentors didn't consider factoring in during my decision making. She asked me about what I wanted to get out of life. What kind of impact did I want to contribute to this world? How much time did I want to dedicate to my career? Did I want a family? Just by answering those questions slowly, my decision about my future career was made very clear. Well, I teach uh, BIM 100. It's an upper division molecular biology course. I love that class because it really is one of the first opportunities that students get to really delve into why is molecular biology interesting. And they start to think about not only you know, learning things from a textbook, but how do we know what we know. Molecular biology is on a very microscopic level and so it's very unrelated. You can't see it face to face. So what she tries to do is bring in a lot of medical and biomedical research to show how it's actually related to what we're studying in the classroom. I think what I find most rewarding about teaching is when students get that aha moment where they realize that they understand something or they realize that there's a question that they have that has never been answered. Um, or they realize that they have the tools to begin to answer those questions or perhaps that they have figured out the experiment to test the model that we've been kind of you know, tossing back and forth in the lab. When I met Tracy, I immediately realized that she was no ordinary person. She was remarkably lucid, articulate and intelligent and had a fantastic positive attitude and likable personality. So of course I felt very fortunate that she wanted to join the lab. I think one of the things that I'm probably most proud of is the work that I, along with other group of other faculty and students, put in to develop a requirement for graduation for students to formally have a course that deals with issues of diversity and equity and inclusion. And the idea is that, you know, when students leave, they have a theoretical framework within which to really think about diversity and their own identity in the context of this increasingly diverse and global society. On the day that Tracy left my lab for graduate school, I told myself someday she was going to be my boss. As far as I can tell, she is clearly on track for that prediction to become true. I think the other thing that is extremely rewarding is when students recognize that the process of doing science is just as much fun as getting the answer, as getting that, you know, getting that final figure for a paper, but just the process of talking and thinking and exploring and designing experiments and redesigning experiments and collaborating um, and, and recognizing that the process is as much fun as the end result. And for a lot of students, I think that's another aha moment. And to be part of that with, with students is, is just incredibly rewarding.